Wardens, my Lord, Aldermen, Visiting Prime Warden, Masters, Liverymen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Furniture Makers Company Royal Charter Dinner. Welcome to our principal guests this evening, the Lord Kirkham, Sir John Sorrell and his wife, Lady Frances, and Alderman Professor Michael Manelli from our Broad Street Ward, the Prime Warden of the Goldsmiths Company, Richard Agata, along with his wife, Leslie, who importantly is also the master of the Fletcher's Company. Martin Mosley, the master of the Carpenter's Company, and his wife, Joanna, in whose fine hall we dine tonight. Lieutenant Colonel James Bryant, commanding officer of Seven Rifles, our affiliated regiment, and the Reverend George Bush, our chaplain, and the rector of St. Mary Le Beau. Welcome to you all. We are approximately six months into my year, and I would like to thank the wardens, Paul von der Heide and David Dewing, along with all the court of assistants for all their hard work in taking the company forward and supporting me. As we mark this company's golden anniversary as a city livery, we are to be honored with a royal charter from Her Majesty the Queen. What perfect timing. At this significant milestone for the company, I would like to acknowledge the enormous strides made by so many masters before me and by all who work as assistants on the court, along with the chairman and liverymen on our numerous committees and our gallant clerk and CEO and his team in the office at our hall. Thank you all very much. I am delighted to have some of our corporate members with us here this evening um, and along with their guests. Welcome to B&Q, Blum, CD UK, Chaucer, Furniture Village, Willison Gambier and our newest corporate members, Bright House, along with all of their guests. And thank you very much for your support for the livery. We are the very best example of a modern closed livery, serving our trades well, relevant and engaged. Our livery and trust will raise and deliver over £250,000 of charitable gifts, plus provide conservatively a further £250,000 worth of pro bono work. So 500000 this year, and in three years we expect it to be at least 750000 a year. I can tell you that's a good deal more than many of our more senior liveries in the movement. Together with all our trade associations, the British Furniture Confederation and the All-Party Parliamentary Furniture Industry Group, we ensure we are getting the level of support from government merited by a furnishing sector which delivers 20 billion a year to the UK's GDP. That's about 3% of the total. And it's a sector that employs over 250,000 people. To put that in perspective, our giant financial services industry, one of our country's strongest assets, contributes about 13% of the GDP. We have a lot to be proud of and to talk about. Our membership continues to increase. We have admitted five liverymen and 41 freemen in recent months. And the new chairman of membership, Alex Savile Brown, tells me that the trend is continuing with good numbers expected over the next six months. Excellent news and a sure sign of our relevance to our members. I would like to welcome the new liverymen and freemen who have joined the company recently and who are with us here for dinner tonight. So if I may, may I ask the new freemen, that's Mark Green, Dennis Keeling, Vince Linane, René Mascari, Paul Stackhouse and David Woodward, along, along with the new liveryman, Debbie Johnson and Phil Reynolds, to please stand and be recognised. The more observant of you might have noticed that we also have 50 fish joining us for dinner tonight. <laughs> These are gold fish to represent our golden anniversary, if nobody had quite worked that one out. And I reassure you that none of these goldfish have been hurt in the making of this spectacle, and they're all due to go to a good home after they've swum for your pleasure. Hopefully, you will have all seen the high chair during the reception. Uh, this is to be presented to their Royal Highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, for their much publicised son, Prince George. The chair designed by Katie Walker 
was judged the winner from a selection of excellent submissions from many of our leading designer makers. Katie's contemporary solution in Ripple Dash, with adjustment to take the prints right through his early years, was judged the winner by a distinguished panel of her peers. Congratulations to you, Katie, for an excellent design. I do hope that you all had some time to see the new book, uh, Modern British Furniture, Designed Since 1945. Leslie Jackson, its author, has been busy signing copies, very busy, she's got writer's cramp in fact now, so, and is one of our special guests tonight. Welcome to you, Leslie. The enormous body of research and work involved in this project has meant that we are all rewarded with a book that will be a lasting testament to this period of British furniture design and manufacture. So many thanks also should go to Cheryl Shear for all her hard work in helping me make this project a reality, and my thanks again to the many sponsors and donors who are with us tonight. I am also delighted to have the V&A's Head of Publishing, Mark Eastman, amongst my guests this evening. Welcome to you, Mark. The V&A are publishing this book, and we hope that their global network of retailers and our joint promotion of the book will ensure that the leading colleges and universities and companies in our trade and industry will take it up as the authoritative book on the period. You may already have seen the book on the shelves at Waterstones, WH Smith, the Tate, Tate Modern, Conran, Foils, Hatchards, and of course, the V&A. So we have very high hopes for it. Please note that the livery has a stock of the book with the unique commemorative book jacket. The profit margin on the sales of our commemorative version goes into our charitable funds. So it's not too late to purchase a unique signed copy this evening if you missed out earlier. We're also going to use the book for student prizes. Jessica and I are keen supporters of the V&A, and this has been yet another example of how the V&A, working with the city livery companies, can help promote the history and trade to great effect. So my thanks to the V&A. Before I ask Lord Kirpen, Kirkham to present the company with its Royal Charter, I will say a few words of thanks to him for the tremendous support he has given this livery over the past years. For those of you who do not know, and there can't be many of you, it was Graham Kirkham who founded DFS in 1969 and built it into the leading furnishing manufacturer and retailer it is today. He sold it, acquired it, again, sold it again, and amassed a sum far too vulgar uh, uh, to, to mention here, but uh, um, a sizable sum. And his contribution to the industry and his charitable work earned him a knighthood in 1995, a peerage in 1999, and a CVO in 2001. He continues to invest in retail parks, farming, and notably a recent joint venture acquisition of Iceland frozen foods. He obviously needs a large workforce to worry about. His Graham Kirkham Foundation supports a wide range of local and national charities including the Furniture Makers Company. And he is the Deputy Patron of the Outward Bound Trust, the Trustee Chairman of the Duke of Edinburgh Award, and the Deputy President of the Animal Health Trust. As one of our livery company's principal benefactors, he has always sought to push us along, offering to match funds raised by us and continuously setting the bar high for our work in support of our trades. Thank you, Graham. We are all very, very grateful for your support. Sorry, this is rather long. I won't be long now. Some of you may be wondering what a royal charter is and why the company has been honoured with one. Well, you will have seen a lot about the power of a royal charter in the press today. Coincidentally, through the use of a royal charter, Parliament have, somewhat controversially, been granted power over the press and its regulator. Royal charters are only conveyed by the monarch to grant a right or power on a body corporate, or occasionally an individual. Typically, they're used to establish a significant city, university, or company. A royal charter is not to be confused with a royal warrant. A royal charter is much more significant and has perpetual effect. The monarchy has only conveyed 980 royal charters, of which approximately 750 remain. 
the earliest of which was in 1066. Notable recipients are the Universities of Oxford, Cambridge and Durham, the British East India Company, the British South Africa Company, p and the BBC, the Bank of England, and some of our fellow livery companies. The Privy Council advised the Queen that we too were a worthy recipient. And our thanks must go to past master Roger Richardson and Keith Laurie for their hard work in meeting all of the necessary stipulations from Her Majesty's Privy, Privy Council. Both Roger and Keith are with us this evening and thank you very much indeed for you both for the hard work you put in. My Lord, may I now call upon you to say a few words and make the presentation of the Royal Charter. <laughs>